Welcome to the MPS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I return! Greetings, everyone! Hello, Silver. How have you been? I have been well. Busy and well. Ah, that is good, that is good. Um, last we talk, and last if I understand right, you were at a convention. I was. I was at HarmonyCon, and it was quite wonderful. Ah, so you can say that it was all harmonious and whatnot? Well, harmonious? No, we, we could be quite raucous. <laughs> or mm, testing the line of decency, especially with the 18 plus uh, e- evening panels. Oh my. I tell, I tell you, you get me playing a game of Jackbox with the Riff Pony folks, there's going to be some memorable lines. Oh my. Um, or, or Brony's React panel where I talked about how I had a booger. During uh, one recording session, I had to go back and re-record because it was distracting. <laughs> uh, I, I did. Was all of that recorded? Yes. Nice. It's on AC Racebest channel. Nice. So the people at home could listen to you talk about your boogers. <laughs> yes. God no! What have we done? It's a special uh, pick of a series. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I miss this. I seriously miss this. Oh boy. So anywho, in today's episode review, we're going to continue on where we left off from the Arcane League of Legends uh, review for Season 1. So last off, we reviewed Episode 1, 2, 3, or basically Act 1. And now we're going to try and cover Act 2 and 3. So, uh, man, uh, before we start, I guess first impressions are in order. So, how how did you like um, the second act, Silver? Well, I that's the act where things really start to pick up steam. I mean, the first act is building sympathy for these characters and their worldview, but now we get to see where the consequences of their actions for that one fateful night have taken them. And so this is pro- I think this is the strongest part because now we see them coming into their own as characters. But we also see the elements of their downfall setting up. So this is I, th- I would argue this is my favorite part of the uh, story arc of the first season. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And as for me, it, the, the whole... How do you put this? Mm, as, see, oh, sorry, I'm... Um, uh, it's been a while for me since I last watched this, and uh, things are a bit. Uh, there, there's a huge gap in memory loss right now for me. But um, as far as I can remember, Act Two was one of this uh, one of the act that kind of splits the story between um, um, Violet and uh, Jace. Like there's two um, split stories between the two protagonists, like. We get to see how things are done in the, uh, I won't say underworld, but hmm, what was their will again? Like, oh, man, I forgot. The upper oh, one, the, there's a specific name for it, but I, like for now, I'll just call it the top and the bottom. Like, uh, Vi is um, familiar with the bottom, while Jace is um, going, or Jace is well known at the top like he's he's on cloud nine as they say and while vi is at the bottom just got out of jail and trying to find her sister and that there is a well kind of a really cool story <clears throat> by the way i believe the lower city is called uh, zon zon and the upper city the upper city is uh Piltover. Ah, right. It's like it's like built over, but built over. <laughs> it's clever. Oh my god! Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm not mistaken. The website has it. Oh my god! Give a second. Oh, man. All right, here we go. Piltover and Zon. All right, yeah. I'm gonna put that there so I can remember stuff. <laughs> oh, boys. So anyway, um, if you guys 
I'm guessing you guys at home have watched this already and enjoyed the heck out of it. And this is just listening to our views and well, what we like about it. So yeah, as per usual, if you have not watched this episode, go watch it now. Welcome back. So anyway, we start off the episode with, well, um, a celebration. Um, we see that Heimerdinger is talking to Jace and telling him how much he has, uh, what you call this, improved um, Piltover and ushered in a new era, uh, the era of um, Magecraft, was it? Or uh, uh, Hextech, Hextech, yes. Um, in have sorry, I'm hard to uh, push the world to Hextech. So, and at the same time too, um, Heimerdinger tells Jace that uh, he wants him to do the speech ceremony for the um, convention. Was it? Well, let's see here. Uh, as I recall. Heimerdinger wants Jace to give the speech, ah, yes. which is traditionally Heimerdinger's uh, role. And this is foreshadowing Jace's rise, but also Heimerdinger's downfall. Uh, we have, between these two, it's part of what I like about this show is that no one's wholly in the right or wrong. There's always an element of, of truth on both sides. Heimerdinger has had a long life and so he knows the dangers of new technology. He's seen what happens if if you're reckless. At the same time, because he's so old, he doesn't appreciate the drive that motivates people with shorter lives. Yeah. And, uh, sorry? And Jace is filled with new ideas. And uh, this is going to be the start of his ascent and eventual downfall as he becomes a member of the council. But uh, he, does, he doesn't realize the danger of this new technology or the loss. And this episode where he has new inventions to show off, but chooses not to promote them right then and there, shows the conflict within him to both honor Heimerdinger, but also wanting to unveil everything to the new world. Yeah, and with that there... Um, honestly speaking, this is one of those shows that gets it. Like, the story is great. The motivation and all that stuff. Like, you don't see this in shows that much. Like, when, when you see any drama or whatnot, like, like your CSI or whatever it is, like, you don't see that. You don't see the conflict that's brewing in the person in the person uh, you, you, what you see is what you get kind of deal but with this one you you see what's going on and you understand his conflict but at the same time too he wants progress and so on and he does even say it in the show that you live for a long time and you don't understand how we uh, people of short lives feel and so on blah 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 yes and uh, well that will eventually drive quite the wedge between them Mm, but that also um, tells uh, Heimerdinger how out of touch he is. Well, give him time. That's his journey in all this. Mm. You're never too old to start learning something new. That is true. And uh, let's move on because um, the Heimerdinger part is kind of okay. Uh, we, we do see that uh, Kathleen, was it? Uh -huh. the assist the well quote unquote assistant to Jace when she was young. Now she's all grown up. She is a city guard and because of the because of her parents' influence, she's kind of stuck doing uh quote unquote safe jobs. <coughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, um and she hates it. Oh, that is true. That is true. I mean, she ain't um, no princess, but people treat her like one. But anywho, um, let's move on to, well, the dogs. And in this one, uh, we see a nearby airship uh, and 
Silco's henchmen are preparing to, well, uh, prepare a large shipment of Shimmer. And it seems that they are going, they, they are attacked by the Firelights, a gang of mass vigilantes known for their flying hoverboards. So, Marty McFly would like to have a word with you all. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure the Firelights have much more, a uh, better tech than what he has. Uh, could you just imagine? Your tongue, it's the future! <laughs> oh my god, could you just imagine Mattel doing that? Man, that never happened. Are you, are you kidding? It's it's 2021. No, wait, wow. No, it's 2022. <laughs> wow, am I that out of it? Yeah, yeah, I am. 2022, and we still don't have flying cars or hoverboards. What the hey? I was promised flying cars. <laughs> um, Sorry. But hey, Where's my <laughs> flying car, Bruce? <laughs> I remember that. Oh, that was Batman. Was it? It was. <laughs> well, technically Harley Quinn, but it was said to Batman. Oh, yeah. Really. It was Bruce Wayne. Oh, man. Spoilers. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, boy. But anywho, but anywho, um, continuing on with the story, um, the Flyer Flies, uh, fly fly, uh, mm, fly fly attack Silco's gang and whatnot. And they do a pretty good job of subduing the gang members until when they go below deck to, well, kind of destroy the supply or were they there to destroy the supply? I believe they were there to claim the supply. But Jinx uh, throws a wrench into everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, Jinx is another character that is fascinating to talk about, but with hmm, how do I put this? She's fascinating to talk about in private. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I'm not sure I do. I mean, it, it's one of are those we things. Private right now? Uh, well, we're recording this, but what I mean is like uh, private without any other person hearing us because she's uh, she's kind of an enigma of mental health. We're no mental health expert, so we're kind of treading on thin ice, if you know what I mean. No, I get that. I get that. I can't properly diagnose, but I think it's safe to say that the events of that terrible night in her childhood are still haunting her. Mm -hmm. And in sorry. quite the literal sense. Oh, oh, yeah. And it, th there's a lot going on for her that it's like, oh man, certain people would just say slap the girl and. Um, shake her and stuff, <laughs> but at the same time too, well, you, you're you're not being sympathetic. You don't understand how she feels. Blah 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 blah. Well, I I have to say, anyone who says that a solution is to slap someone and shake them, uh, they're probably not mental health uh, officials, and I sincerely hope they don't employ that idea. Oh, they did it in airplanes. <laughs> Okay, well that's a comedy, <laughs> and it's more that everyone's lining up to get their get their shot in. <laughs> that is true. Man, I love the I, I love the old car, com, um, comedies. They they, they were they they, <laughs> they will never pass this uh, in this day and age. But man, they were so fun. No, not in this day and age. But that's why we have arcane. That's for this day and age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anywho, um, Jinx or Powder, well, Powder no and Jinx right now, throws a wrench in everything, uh, kind of kills almost everyone. And uh, uh, here's the thing. I don't know if they stopped Firelight's plan or just helped it along. So, yeah. It's a bit of an unknown right now. Yeah, well, I think the real point of this conflict is to show that there are multiple factions uh, working in the for lack of a better term, underworld. That while Hextech may rule the upper uh, of Piltover, Zahn is still... It's still up for grabs with multiple factions arguing mm -hmm. for it. So right now, um, as far as we know, we have three factions. Uh, Piltover, Zahn... Well, not really Zahn, but uh, Silco's gang and also uh, the Firelights. So we have three factions. Uh, the Firelights are unknown elements to this. Like we got no idea what their motivation is. 
uh, they could be there to steal the uh, what was it again the shimmer so that's there obviously we do know but we're putting in suspense people and um, Piltover wants to stop well the Zon or Silco so <laughs> yep, they can't ima- they can't imagine why that they reject this progress, this upper city, but then none of them actually go down to see what these people are living with. Yeah, and they don't really know how bad it is. Like previously, when um, who was the big fella? I forgot his name. Um, what was his name? Let me see. Oh, the guy who ran the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Let's see if his name is uh, mentioned. Uh, Vendor? Yeah, Vendor. So, okay. when Vendor was running things, um, Piltover and Zon had an agreement. Like, he, uh, Zon takes care of his shit and don't do... Well, follow the rules to a certain point and Piltover will just close a blind eye and so on. So, Everybody was taken care of and so on, blah, blah, blah. But uh, with him gone, eh, things go for a turn for the worse. Yeah, Silco is a much more aggressive uh, leader. He's not looking to keep keep balance or uh, protect people. He's looking to raise an army Mm -hmm. and influence. But... Oddly enough, Jinx is the is his weakest link because he he does actually care for her in a very twisted way. But at the same time, uh, she's the most destructive member, and so she risks calling down attention before he's ready to move. Yep, and so he's in a con- he's in a constant state of mm, should I shouldn't I mm. deal with her. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, a father dealing with a spoiled child kind of deal. <coughs> but anywho, I- I'm going to try and um, speed things up because my memory of it is kind of all over the place. So, um, after the incident, um, the... Sorry, uh, after the incident happened, a uh, few things happened. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to really remember this. Um, after the incident, um, reports came in and whatnot. Um, a police girl named Kathleen. Yes, I need to remember this one too. Uh, Kathleen came by and do a bit of in, a bit of investigation and whatnot, and she went to the ship and discovered one of the henchmen. Uh, the henchman was there, hurt because of uh, what you call this, um, because of Jinx's action, and when interrogated the chief of police came along and stopped her and told her to get back to the city. Um, that doesn't seem right, if you ask me. <clears throat> so, anywho, now with that, uh, we go back to Piltover and we see that they're doing the ceremonies and so on. And Jace is about to... Well, Jace is going to... How do I put this? Um, uh, give a speech and announce a few things. And when he has... When he did the speech and whatnot and was about to reveal something, he decided not to just out of respect for Heimerdinger. Uh, his friend, Victor questions his action. Why, why didn't you um, show our latest invention? Uh, and this kind of what everybody was expecting. Uh, him to show what they've made, um, show new things and so on. And I'm wondering, did this happen with Heimerdinger too? It's very possible. I mean, he was terrified of when he first saw Hextech in its raw form. Mm. And he cautioned them they must close it down. He seems to have changed his tune at given the progress the city has enjoyed. 
But at the same time, he, I think d- deep down he knows the danger is always lurking there. Yeah. So while that's happening or done, uh, we see that Jinx is going through Jace's place and stealing what could be called the Hextech. Well, at least one gem. Just one gem. I'm, this is almost a nuclear level technology, really. You can't have elements of it anywhere but under the expert authority. Because <clears throat> otherwise, it's pretty easy to blow something up. And it's not a small something, as we saw in the first act. Mm-hmm. And one, li- one little gem took out a good chunk of a building oh yeah and yeah she she kind of took a refined version if i'm not mistaken uh she stole a refined mm-hmm. version and at the same time too cost mayhem and chaos um kill a few guards and so on um while she was running away um kathleen noticed her and tries to give chase but backs off because certain other people were injured and um tried to help them if I'm not mistaken so uh, a, either way she knows she can't she can't find this uh, thief on her own she needs an expert mm-hmm. which is why she goes to find a, a partner and boy howdy does she find a partner yep. um, how did <laughs> how did they um get Kathleen to go there because I I oh yeah okay um now I remember something yes 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 so after the whole incident happened uh Kathleen on her own accord uh, managed to kind of create a clue board with certain things and whatnot and she decides to head to the prison where all the criminals are kept and decides to interrogate one of the person that she met in the ship. Um, when she went there, they know um, they couldn't really talk to the guy because his jaw is kind of broken by a person, which is Vi. So, Kathleen went up to Vi asking why the hey did you um, smack this person and somehow came to an agreement that okay I'll help you get out of jail as long as you can help me uh, solve my problem that's what at least Kathleen was thinking and somehow Kathleen managed to do so by helping by well, not really helping but for, would you just call it forging a document to release um, Vi well, she's basically abusing her uh, contact with the newest council member. Yes. Uh, and so she's taking advantage. I got friends in high places. Yes. We, and with that, um, Adventure Ho, uh, we see that um, Kathleen and Vi are totally opposites, like um, sugar and vinegar. Is that is that a phrase? Uh, oil and water? Yeah, oil and water is much better. So, um, they, they they are so un... Uh, what you want to call this? Un, the unlikeliest pair of duos. And yeah, they, they go to uh, Zion? Zone. Yeah, they go to Zion. And they find how to... They start zoning out. <laughs> yeah, and, and they look for clues. While they're doing that, Jace is mingling around, uh, being, how do I put this? Well, not really abusing, but his position is kind of security, was it? He's put in charge of security and he's trying to crack down on all forms of, mm, well, smuggling, abuse, circumventing the process, which, son of a gun, puts him in conflict with the very... Counselors who rule the council, yeah. who rule the city. 
Yeah. And it's going to be a, a harsh wake up. This is an idealist coming into contact with terrible amounts of moral gray. Yeah. And which undermines any ideal. Yeah. And that there too is, well, reality, really. And him trying to do the right thing kind of hurts other people. And with that, um, there we introduced to another character. Um, if I'm not mistaken, her name is Mel. Uh, Mel here is part of the council member and was one of the first people to help them discover Hextech. Although I clarify, I don't think he's hurting other people. Uh, he's actually protecting a great many people by enforcing the rules, but he's in conflict with the council other member, counselors, yeah. which, th which then makes it harder for him to rule on any other uh, issue. So to have the freedom to help people, he has to let go of certain rigid ideals. And it's a question of can you can an honest man stay honest in this system that seems corrupt at its core? Yeah. When, you're, when your ruling council is uh, expecting exceptions to the law when of all things they should be the ones enforcing it yeah and that's a problem there and that, that is a huge problem there uh I, I think that ends a happy progress day so um when we move on to episode five um we, we see that uh, we follow Vi and kathleen and I, i'm just gonna speed through this one because uh the basis of the idea is that we see that how messed up this place is uh, with Silco's rule. Um, everybody is in worse shape than they were before. And yeah, um, with that, we see things get worse. Uh, we we see, um, how I put this, um, Vi beating people up for information and so on and in the end they get well she gets beaten up to a pulp and is badly injured <clears throat> yep because she doesn't she doesn't fully appreciate what zon is dealing with with this glimmer and also she's really on her high horse about uh the neglect of uh, Piltover and its leadership. In fact, several times throughout this story, she is going to. Well, she won't. She's not wrong, but her timing is terrible, and as such, she's probably th uh, pushing away more support than she's gaining. But <laughs> how do I put this? Um, to be honest, her way of thinking is uh, the thinking of a child. Y you have to remember that. When she went to jail, she, she was, um, what, probably 14, 15, 16, give or take? Yep. So her, her, she's, she's filled with rage and anger and so on and doesn't really understand how a proper adult would think. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the there are pl plenty of plenty of quote unquote well adjusted people in this uh, show who don't seem to have a wide world view. That is true. They think, I mean, good lord, one of the council members is an elderly man who is easily distracted by a children's toy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true too. But anyway, mm -hmm. we we need to plow forward, mm -hmm. move ahead, try to detect mm -hmm. it. So. Uh, we, we see that um, Vi is injured and Kathleen takes her to a rundown windmill. Uh, it used to be a place where Vi and Powder used to hang out and they use it as a safe house for the moment. Uh, Kathleen is approached by a, mm, I won't say beggar or, well, t technically it's a bum but they recognize him from way back when. So, anywho, uh, he brings 
Kathleen to a healer and they managed to get some form of medicine for Vi to recover. And the medicine itself is Shimmer. That's kind of interesting if you think about it. So, anywho. Well, I mean, everything. The saying too much of anything becomes a vice. Mm, and you, you have to wonder, like, what is in the. Uh, what you call this? Uh, medicine or the drug that heals people, but if you overuse it, you become a monster and so on. Like, that, that is very fascinating. Well, it's not that different from moder- from steroids. Uh, we use steroids to treat uh, skin irritations or conditions, but too much uh, concentrated, it begins to have a debilitating effect on the body. Mm. So, how, can, how else can I put it? Medicine in general works within limitations. Too much of anything throws the system out of whack. And there are, are reasons some people choose, wrongly, I, I would say, to uh, take an excess amount. But uh, there's very few things. Uh, that uh, are of no use at all. That's sort of the way the world works, I think. Yeah, mm, yeah. It, it's just how you use it. Because um, on the wiki, sorry, <laughs> on the wiki page right now, I'm I'm seeing the notable use for a uh, shimmer in lore, and yeah, uh, why in just a small amount of shimmer that was mixed with a healing potion that Kathleen obtained from. A local potion maker so it's kind of a booster um i would say like it boosts the healing process and so on so in the right amount the small amount it's good but if abused then yeah you turn into a big giant monster big giant monster and you've got a significantly reduced lifespan yep but anywho let's continue on um, after the healing we see them run for the hills and try to get away from silko's men uh they kind of got away far for them to not get caught until they see a flare that jinx uh what you call this um jinx light up yep she set it off Mm -hmm. and vi notice it and yeah, the well, Vi runs to towards it while Catalina just follows behind. <laughs> so as they head to the place, which is top of the water tower, was it? Uh, yeah. Um, Vi sees powder and hugs her and just is in tears, like she misses her and so on and things go awry when they well jinx sees um kathleen thinking that oh um you just came here with her because you're just um using me to get to this ball thing and yeah there's a lot of psycho (laughs) there's a lot of misunderstanding and uh, how how do I put the silver? What was your take on it? Basically, Jinx is is looking for the sister that she lost years ago, and seeing this other person makes her realize that she's possibly been replaced. Vi is try- also trying to reconnect with the sister, but doesn't know if that sister still exists. Uh, so many are saying that. Well, that that sister is gone. Powder is dead. Uh, long live Jinx. So this is that mo- that first moment of confrontation where they can't know who is who really, really. Hmm. And unfortunately, the this is only going to end in tears for both of them. 
Yeah, and that that's the oh, man. How how do I even put this? Because at the same time, too, like if. How 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 do I want to put this? Because Vi never agreed to helping uh, Kathleen look for the criminal, but because it's Jinx, they found her. And yeah, oh man, this is this is complicated on a whole new level. Well, I, I think Vi agreed to help find it, but with a different goal than. Uh, then arrest her. It's more like get her to stop. Mm. But they never. And, freak. But but they can't turn back time. Mm. That's the sad thing. Yeah, and talking about time, we see the um firelights come down and attack Jinx, and somehow kidnap Vi and Kathleen. And they, Jinx here right now thinks this is all part of a plan and she's set up and so on. So She's giving way too much credit. Yeah. So with that, uh, Jinx kind of blasts people away and yeah, Kathleen and Vi got kidnapped by the Firelights. Um, when they yes. are... How do you put this? Uh, when they get... Rescued, I think. So not really rescued, but when they're tied up in the basement, we see uh, one of the members uh, pull out Vi and unmask her. And we see that it's Echo, the scrawny kid from way back when. He's kind of a rebel leader now. Ooh, that's cool. Mm, he, a, a true hero. That is true. And well, he got how do I want to say um I won't say got, but um Vi sees him and hugs him because he misses like he <laughs> she misses the old days. She misses all of her friends and so on. Um Vi is out of the loop. That's the thing. Most of those friends are now sadly dead. Or have grown to become Adults. Well, and Echo Echo's a rather uh, interesting side character. We don't get a lot of perspective from Echo's point of view, but it's interesting how he has built a community that appeals to not only uh, people from below ground, but also from Piltover. So he, he's the bridge between Zaun and Piltover, and he doesn't even realize it. Mm -hmm. And I, I can wait for season two because, uh, you know what? I'm going to stop there. <laughs> so, anywho, we got catch up with, or well, I won't say catch up. Like, uh, Vi gets catch up with the goings on of what's happening right now. And she still doesn't really believe that um, Powder can do all the things that Echo said. So, um, fast forwarding a few chapters or episodes Kathleen gets released they kind of make up a plan uh, they got the crystal ball thingy and they decide to head to Peltover to talk to Jace about the whole thing uh, on the other end with Silco um, Jinx is pissed off at him for lying to him about his her sister and Things are how I would put this. They they ain't great. They ain't great. There's a lot of infighting and whatnot. <laughs> Royal <coughs> royally screwed may be a proper description. Oh, that is also true. Uh, anyway, Silva, so, um, why don't you take this few uh, this last three, the, the third act. Ah, uh, the third act, the the act where basically everything falls apart and everyone. Is quite mad oh, yeah. at one another. Mm -hmm. We are all in trouble. Oh yeah, we are all going to die. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a. It ain't going to be a violent death. It's going to be fun, right? Yay! 
Well, Jinx will try to make it fun. Yeah, that is true. So basically, within these three episodes, we fit we find relationships breaking. Now, in some way, uh, this it, this is a big test of Jace, who starts leading raids against uh, Sparkle. No, no. What was the what was the substance called again? Shimmer. Yes. Shimmer uh, production plants, but in doing so, he witnesses the toll it takes on uh, the community and the fact that children are being used to manufacture this because that is how deep the corruption spreads and that is how much Piltover has failed uh, the residents. And I think Jace really takes this to heart. Now, at the same time, Jace's mentor lover... Mel. Uh, what have you? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Mel Medara. Mm -hmm. Medar no, no. Mel Medarda. Med Medarda. 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 Ay, that's a that's a mouthful. Uh, we get to meet her mother and learn some of the secret behind Mel's uh, upbringing. Once again, adding more diversity to what could have been a, a simple cookie cutter corrupt temptress mm -hmm. she's a woman who is trying to build an identity for herself after being cast out and now that her mother is here in the city she actually seems less powerful less in charge of her own destiny so as this goes on jace outfits vi with one of those gauntlets designed for uh mining if i'm not mistaken for mining mining gauntlets but it's but they make for pretty good brawler <laughs> gloves as well mm -hmm. but but their alliance is short-lived as jace is horrified by this conflict and vi is again too eager to point out piltover's flaws driving jace away when he could be a very important ally and once again, I always fall back to Stephen Fry and when he says, it's a human failing to prefer to be right than to be effective. <laughs> Vi is undermining herself, being terribly ineffective in this story. But as things build, uh, Powder wants to settle things. She wants to know who is being truthful to her, who is her real family, and who really loves her. So she arranges an abduction of all the involved parties, except for Chase. Yep. Uh, but Silco is her pre is her prisoner. Vi eventually becomes a prisoner, and uh, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. But before that, right? So, um, th there's there's a big uh, gap. Sorry, uh, there's there's something you're missing, uh, and that is the part where Jace meets up with Silco to bargain a deal, and the deal is that um, Silco gets Zon. And all he wants is Jace. Sorry, not Jace. Um, Jinx. And that's the deal. Which is... That's the deal. But then we get the... Just before he is abducted by Jinx, who, of course, is hearing in on this, uh, he... I find it very telling that Silco goes to a statue of his old friend and admits this is a lot harder than he thought it was. In fact, he even admits that his friend was right. Mm-hmm which is no small thing. Uh, but that is the moment where Jinx abducts him. So, again, I, there's this gray and three-dimensional approach to these characters. Even Silco, who is the closest we get to pure evil, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he is a corruptive source. He is aggressive, destructive, He's almost as bad as the Shimmer itself in in uh, high quantities. But even he has this sort of twisted love for a daughter he's thoroughly messed up. Mm. It's distorted love. It's not something I would ever celebrate in a relationship. But it shows he has a human side that is warped by the conflict between uh, between the two cities. So, yes, uh, and he's abducted by Jinx. Jinx wants to have it out. And in doing so, in in attempts to escape in a crossfire, 
Silco is killed, and that is the that is the death of Powder. Mm. Now it's just Jinx. And at the same time, and too. The, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, go ahead. Sorry. At the same time, too, um, when Vi has to choose between um, Kathleen or her, uh, there's the part where I I don't really hmm, how to put this. It's one of um, it, it's it's one of those parts in the show that kind of I won't say bugs. It irks me because she what's wrong with Vi having a friend in Kathleen like it feels like the jealous ex-girlfriend syndrome if you know what I mean oh, I'm, I know what you mean I'm picking up what you're throwing down but uh, it is well it's the same possessiveness I think Silco instilled in her uh, yeah probably that he, he wants to uh, own Jinx. And, and Jinx wants to own Vi. True. <laughs> I, I do like how uh, the subtle love interest kind of bloom between um, Vi and Kathleen. Or I, I'm not sure if it's go both ways or one way, but I do like that subtlety. I think it goes both ways. There's a scene as they're trying to recoup uh, from the battle, and they've retreated back to uh, to Kathleen's home. Mm. They're both lying on a bed, looking at each other. I am getting serious romantic vibes mm-hmm. off that stare. But they did they didn't really capitalize on it. So I really appreciate that because if it's in other shows, they would have made it out and pff, whatever. Now, in the background of all this, going unnoticed by all the major players, is Victor's efforts to heal himself. Mm. Using by introducing Shimmer into the Hex Core, mm. <laughs> which enables it to to now affect physical bodies. A tragedy of which is that during one of these experiments, an assistant who was crushing on Victor hard uh, is killed, and Victor he's regaining his his body strength and mobility, but he's also twisting into something not human. And the guilt, but the guilt of this death is going to weigh on him for, I'm assuming, the rest of the series. That is also true. There is no definitive outcome for him, however. Unless you play the game. (laughs) Unless you play the game. But I haven't. But it's a spoiler. (laughs) But uh, one of the big things is is a line he said to Jace. In trying to be great, we forgot to do good. Oh. Yeah, I removed that and line. And that is, that is the beginning of the downfall of Jace's political career. Because as you say, he, he brokers a deal with Silco to freeze on because he realizes that the people of Piltover are in no position to dictate laws or conditions mm-hmm. uh, to the citizens of Zon. <laughs> they're basically, they're literally two worlds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I always say and two so, countries. To, well, countries, but I would even go so far as to say worlds. Yeah, probably. So one so alien to the other. Yeah. But this is when Jace, basically, who's been mild-mannered and polite at the start, is now saying, I don't give a damn what any of you think, except you, Mel. Mm-hmm. And w- which shows how much he re- respects her. And Mel is conflicted because her mother wants them to continue the conflict, to destabilize. The more Piltover is on the rocks, the more their homeland can take advantage. But in an act of defiance and perhaps love for Jace, she votes to approve the uh, the peace settlement, Mm-mm. as do all the others, surprisingly. And that's the moment Jinx's bomb hit breaks the window and the season ends mm. oh what it sees I know uh, oh, that, I want to know what happens next I know, I know. And, and that, that, uh, even that we don't know if uh, the bomb hits or not like we, we just see that the missile goes through and scene ends um, but on a flashback not really a flashback but uh, in previous ch- uh, chapters or episodes uh, we see that 
Jace and the other member of the board kind of kicked uh, or kind of forcefully retired Heimerdinger. And Heimerdinger, on his end, has to, well, wants to understand what's going on and hits to Zon just to see how bad it is. And once he's there, he, he couldn't imagine it being more worse than what he thought. And as he goes there walking around, he discovers a hoverboard. Um, uh, complimenting on the design and whatnot and just commenting on certain things. And this is where he meets Echo. And they... Yep, who shows, again, the, the prettier side of Zong. Yeah, and they hit it off real great. And he introduced him, or Heimerdinger, to, well, his home base. But we don't yet know what will come of this meeting. Or... I mean, if the council is dead, Heimerdinger may find himself back in political power without even asking. True by default, but obviously Jace is going to be alive. He's a game character in the game. He survives. So, yeah, um, th this is one of those things where I want to see what happened in Season 2. And if I'm not mistaken... Which we might not get until 2023. No! Really? I heard that it was going to be coming out in 2022. I hope, I hope, but I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. But, anywho, but... Knowing I do not. Mm. Okay, uh, I'm going to read on the wiki page for season two. Uh, following the season's conclusion on November 20th, 2021, Riot Game and Netflix announced that a second season was in production. It's currently scheduled to be released sometime after 2022. Uh, that will be next year. Uh after 2022, so that would be 2023. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Why not just say 2023? Netflix and Riot Games. Oh, what a tragedy. <laughs> We've got to wait to 2023. Yeah, we, we got the movies. We got the movies. Alrighty then. So anyway, do, do, with, with that... Do we? Is there, so, a, is there a League of Legends movie? I'm just saying that we got other movies. Uh, we got what? Um, uh, Doctor Strange and the Mad House of Madness and something like that. Um, there's going to be, like I said, there's going to be other movies that we can fill our time with. Uh, with. We'll see. But part of me will always want be wondering, what what are they going to do with that bomb? Oh, Ooh, if it if it doesn't if it doesn't go off. That'd be the ultimate downfall. <laughs> uh, it'll be a dud. It's like, hey. <laughs> the bomb doesn't go off, and they're like, oh, we'd like to uh, change our votes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Could you just imagine? Oh, God. Yeah. So, anyway, um, let's move on to final thoughts. So, Silver, what do you think of well, I have a strong feeling that you're going to love it, but what do you think of League of Legends Arcane or Arcane Leagues of Legends? I, well, you're right. I thoroughly enjoy it. I love the characterization. I love the evolving world that the introduction of this new magic enables a whole shift in the society and the new perils that come with it. Unexpected. It's a great utilization of an in what could have been just a MacGuffin is instead a driving force for political and social change. Uh, I like the characters who are diverse, even the ones you don't like because they're villainous. You can see elements of humanity struggling within them. The, no one force is guiding the development of these, of these two cities. It's all conflicting goals and ideals clashing and in some ways the cities that take shape are impact zones of these clashing ideologies so thoroughly enjoyed it uh i guess there is the there is of course a rushed aspect to it they have to accomplish a lot in just nine episodes mm -hmm. but so some things like the romance between vi and kathleen they 
don't get to flesh that out as much. But it's hinted that it's there. Mm-hmm. And honestly speaking, um, are you done, Silva? Yep. Right. All done. Uh, as for me, I I I like this. Um, it was surprising. Like I. Uh, I went in with a open mind, thinking that okay, this is just going to be another show, so on, blah blah blah. But it was pretty great. Like I, I like the story. I, I like the characterization of the characters, the story, the twists and turns, the art style. My goodness, the art style in this one is surprisingly great. Like, um, how do I put this? You expect. A bit stylized like uh, Spider-Man into the multi Spider-Verse? Almost, but not to that level. But um, what I'm getting at is that um, you, you you see that Riot Games did this. Uh, they did Arcade and it was a huge success. Now you want Blizzard to make Overwatch, uh, Overwatch the series. And you want to see that happen. And like we've seen the CG work that Blizzard did with Overwatch, and yeah, where's yours? Like, yeah, I mean, show us. We, we we want to see it. Throwing down the gauntlet, mm-hmm. and the characterization of the characters—they're really deep and complex. They're not cookie cutters, like you mentioned. Like, they're deep, complex, and thoughtful or mindful. And the short story, the um. Nine episode story, by the way, um, all episodes are above 40 minutes, give or take. So they have a lot to work with. Sorry, they have a lot to work with. And the three episode, oh, sorry, the three arc with three episodes, that was kind of neat. Well, there you go. And honestly, Silver, I would love to see a character analyst um, analyzation from you um, it seems to be in your wheelhouse and how, how would you deal with this that, that would be fun to see I'll see what I can cook up no pressure though no pressure <laughs> no pressure honestly I think my my main fascination would be Jace good intentions gone wrong the fall of the idealist uh and, well, just the sheer drive that pushes this young man from a lesser-known servant house to a counselor, but then I'll, maybe a pariah? Probably. Pariah, is that the right word? An outcast, a member of a low caste. Mm, well, maybe not pariah. But, but he's definitely he, sabotaging his own po- political career. True. He he worked his way up, so on. It's like he's the kind of guy you would want running the council, and yet, uh, because of his morals, he can't be a part of the corruption there. Yeah, and that is a very interesting character. But and with that, um, uh, I, I guess the series end, and we have to wait for season two. But um. <laughs> We have to wait until 2023, which is after 2022. That is true. That is true. But uh, before we... But, but comes before 2024. Um, it 2025 is right out. <laughs> now that you... You mentioned that, right? Now and I'm thinking, like, how much effort that... Um, how much effort they do... They <laughs> How much effort do they need to make to make season two? Uh, f- to start off... Is going to be difficult because, well, uh, they have to make the assets, they have to make the, what you call this, art and so on. Now that they have all of that, um, how is how hard is going to be, uh, how hard is it for them to make season two? Oh, it, I imagine it will take just as much uh, time and energy. I mean, you have to make new assets as you've just changed the dynamics of the city once again, an attack on the highest power. Mm. So the city is going to evolve once more, as I think will the characters. Mm, okay. So they're not resting on their laurels or reusing assets. Uh, I believe that they, they're facing just as many challenges in creating a second season as they did with the first. 
Hmm, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, but uh, certain uh, ca- character designs they can still use, like Jace, Vi, and so on. So yeah. But anywho, um, before we head off, um, uh, I'm reading a comment from uh the first discussion we had. Uh, in all honesty, uh, didn't really say much about the review, but I felt like you might want to hear this. <clears throat> Mm. So, comment is from Hello Dolly, and they say, "Just want to say I love that you, Silver etc. Still do this and have been for so long. I've been listening since like 2015, 2016, five plus years. Shock face. I can tell you're all doing it for the love of the craft, and I like having a podcast to constantly listen. Sorry, constantly turn to." Even if I can't catch every episode, keep it up. <clears throat> I'm glad to hear that. Yep. Yeah, it is just enjoyment of a, a good story. Also, I can't resist. Well, hello, Dolly. How you doing, Dolly? It's so nice to have you back where you belong. <laughs> oh, that. I don't know how the man sang like that. Oh, maybe he <laughs> not gonna go there. But anywho, uh, yeah, we do this because we like it, right? I mean, yeah, we just love to talk about shows that we enjoy. Like, yeah, you know what? I I like doing this because I just enjoy talking to you and the audience at home and just sharing stories. Um, and I enjoy talking about good stories too. And I think Arcane League of Legends is a very good uh, story. So I hope I hope people will check it out. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're we're no shields. Uh, we're not getting paid, but man, it, it is a great story. And I wish we were getting paid for to- uh, talking it up. <laughs> I understand that idea. Yeah. Uh, but anywho, um, with that, let's kind of well, well let's end the episode. Uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambitionsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Ah, uh, do a search for MLP Silver Quill on Twitter, DeviantArt, and the YouTube, and you will find me. Uh, my YouTube in particular will have links to all my my uh, channels including Patreon, Kofi, and even a TV Trump's oh. page, apparently. Someone someone enjoyed my work enough to actually uh, make that. Wow. Which I greatly appreciate. Congratulations, my friend. Um, so what's on the TV Trump page? <laughs> uh, I think the biggest one is that I am the Iron Butt Monkey. <laughs> so um, have they still, are they still calling you Steve? Maybe. <laughs> Oh, wait, that was the wiki. Mm-hmm. That was the, the, wiki. the brony wiki, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't know where they got Steve. I don't think anyone's ever referred to me as Steve. I think someone was being sarcastic and other people were like, what sarcasm? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, silver sounds too far-fetched. So what sounds close to silver? Um, Steve. Yes. <laughs> Oh, man. I love that page. <sighs> it's quite bizarre, I tell you. Yep. Go, go check him out, guys. Like, go check Steve out. <laughs> oh, Steve Steve. <laughs> but anyway, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon, stay up to date, and also Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on from the uh, You can also, uh, <laughs> if you like, you can... Support the show on... That's right. I am rusty with this. If you would like you to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, myself, Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Queen. We'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Silver, I discovered a plan to kind of um, temper our expectations for Arcane Season 2. Does it involve liquor? That and also playing League of Legends. 
I've been warned away from that by actual League of Legends players. They're like, run, be free. Don't fall as I did. <laughs> but how would you know if I and Kathleen are lovers or not? Well, I definitely know you and Kathleen are not because I'm pretty sure she doesn't swing that ball. <laughs>